Hi there, welcome to Race Centre. I'm Dazza. Here we have a 2023 Yamaha R1, obviously on the dyno for a tune. So the things you need to know about these bikes, um, firstly we'll talk about the throttle maps. So the throttle maps are simply the relationship between the twist grip, so your hand, and the throttle plate opening on the throttle bodies. Uh, these bikes, uh, as you would know, have four power modes and changing those modes changes, the re changes how that relationship works. In standard trim, unfortunately, so with the OEM map, uh, the throttle maps leave a little bit to be desired. And what I mean like that, th by that, uh, the first part is they're not completely linear. So in OEM trim, even if you were to say hold your hand constant on the throttle or a static throttle, as the RPM changes with the bike, the throttles actually move around by themselves through the ECU map. Uh, so the first thing we do when we remap these bikes uh, with our NJ84 throttle maps is we sort that out so that the throttles are actually completely linear and the only thing that changes how much they open is your hand. You can then select different power modes to give you uh, a different throttle response. but in any of those power modes, the throttle stay constant unless you move your hand. The reason that's so important um, is, you know, so it, it's so common in, in modern ride-by-wire bikes that they actually have maps like this does standard. Um, there's theories why they do it and stuff like that, but essentially they're trying to low down, make the power a little bit more docile, which is okay in theory, but you've got different power modes if you want the power to be more docile. The problem with the throttles opening by themselves, or as the RPM raises, what can be happening? You'll be coming out of a corner, you're just picking up the throttle a little bit, and you want a little bit more, and all of a sudden the RPMs are rising as well, so the throttle actually opens more than you expect. So it's almost like you're just going for a little bit of throttle and someone's grabbing your hand and opening it more. That's essentially what's happening. So uh, that's never a great situation. Uh, I always use the analogy or liken it to uh, with your front brake. So if you would imagine that if you're doing 60 kilometers an hour and you just touch the front brake a little bit then and you get the brake braking response that you want, then you're doing 100 kilometers an hour and just because the speed is higher, you apply the brake exactly the same amount and you're expecting a similar response, but all of a sudden it grabs the brake a lot more. So if, that, if the brake lever was changing all the time based on your speed, that would be extremely hard to ride, right? Unfortunately, that's what's going with the, on with the throttles on these bikes, is that different RPM, you're gonna get different throttle response because the bike behaves differently, or opens the throttle differently based on the RPM. So as I said, the first thing we do is sort that out so that they're linear, and then what that does for you, it gives you so much more confidence in the throttle and the power delivery, because the only thing that's affecting it is your hand. So that's the number one uh, thing to be done. The next part of the throttle maps, in standard trim, uh, there's areas where they're just far too aggressive. There's bits where they're not opening the throttle much, you know, based on your response, and you might be opening just, you know, say 10% and then you go for another 10% and all of a sudden, rather than giving you 10% opening, it's giving you a lot more than that. So what that's like in the real world is that, you know, as I said, you're, you're going around a corner, you're coming out of the corner, you're opening the throttle, you want it to open a certain rate. Uh, not only did we have the problem about that, you know, as the RPMs rise, it's like someone's pulling your, ha your hand further. Also, depending on the amount of throttle that you're opening, all of a sudden, it's gonna give you a lot more than you asked for. So that's a, that's a, a, a bit of a problem. While in standard trim, it might, you might think, oh, that's fun because the power delivery is so aggressive. Problem with that is if it's aggressive and it's hard to predict what it's doing, you can't really trust it and use it properly. So we put our NJ84 throttle maps in it, which are much, much smoother and have the power delivery a lot smoother. Uh, and in some ways, when you ride them back to back, you might go, well, with the NJ84 throttle map, it might initially feel a little bit more docile of the bike. It has the same power, but it's delivering it in a predictable way. And I always say, the more you trust it, the more you'll use it. So if you were uh, at a racetrack and trying to do a lap time, with the NJ84 throttle maps, the bike is so smooth and predictable that you'll use it. If I use an example that if you're going into a corner really fast on a track and you're trying to get your lap time down so you're carrying a lot more entry speed, um, a lot more mid-corner speed, if you've got the OEM map 
and that it's doing weird things with the throttle and you can't really trust it, you might not think about it at the time, but you're gonna be second guessing that throttle or you're, you're gonna be a little bit hesitant with it and you're, be, and you're gonna be compensating. You're not gonna you know, carry enough corner speed where just a bit of throttle is gonna make it have a nice little gentle slide because you can't control that. As soon as you go for a little bit and wanna have a gentle slide, all of a sudden it gives you heaps and then you've got to back out of it. So you will always be hesitant even in corner entry and mid corner speed because you can't really trust the throttle. So putting the NJ84 throttle maps in really improves the bike so much because you can actually trust the throttle so much that you can then ride the bike properly and know that the throttle's actually your friend. So that you, you, know, you feel completely connected. You want more, it'll give you more. You just want a little bit more, it's only gonna give you a little bit more. You want a lot more, it's gonna give you a lot more. It's just going to respond in exactly what your inputs are. So massively critical. If you've got one of these, it's, it's honestly a must to get those throttle maps sorted out and the NJ84 throttle maps do that. Next one with this job, uh, this bike came in with the standard exhaust and standard ECU map. So we did uh, some base runs with the standard exhaust and then we did uh, runs with the full exhaust system uh, installed, but still the standard OEM map. And then we did uh, a run, runs with the exhaust on and our loading map and then the full custom tune. When it comes to peak power, you'll see with these graphs that the biggest gain obviously was the full system. It actually makes quite a decent gain in terms of peak power, you know, pretty awesome because the bike can breathe better uh, and uh, you get that extra power. You'll see on 100% throttle, uh, even with the OEM map, it's still got a lot more power than it did with the standard exhaust. Uh, and then we've got our loading map, which is a bit better again, and then the custom tune, which is better again. Now you're not gonna see big gains at 100% throttle between the, the, the various maps, so the loading map and our full custom tune, and even the OEM map. But where you will get massive gains from the maps is that if we look at the AFR traces, you can see that um, from the comparing the OEM uh, maps, even the OEM map with the standard exhaust, the AFR can be a bit all over the place. Uh, part of that's because of emissions. Um, and then if you go to put a full system on one of these bikes, you'll see that the AFR is just far too lean in areas. So if you're going to put a full exhaust system onto one of these R1s, you must get the ECU remapped or tuned to suit the bike. So, because it makes a big difference. And if you were to just put this full system on and not um, have the bike tuned, uh, or at least the load-in map that's suited to it, uh, the bike's just gonna constantly run too lean. And in the long run, it's not gonna be good for the motor. So you must have these tuned if you're putting a full exhaust system on it. When we look at the AFR between the load-in map and then the OEM map, you'll just see how much better the, the uh, loading map is. And then one step further is the custom tune. The loading map is awesome. Straight out of the, like loading it in, uh, it will be so good tune wise. The custom tune is just that little bit of cream on top. It's better again, meaning that every time you go into the throttle, not only have you got the sorted out NJ84 throttle maps, but you now got the bike in the zone for its tune wherever you're, whatever RPM you're at, whatever throttle position you're at, um, the bike's just tuned really nicely. You will notice a little bit of a difference between a load-in and a full custom, but they're both pretty awesome. Um, the custom's just that highest level of tune that you can get with it. So the AFR show you that difference and what that feels like in the real world, the, the graphs don't really do it justice and the peak power doesn't do it justice with the, the fuel tune but the meat in the middle and the throttle response is just beautiful when it's tuned um, in and the AFR is in the right zone it, throughout the whole map because the bike responds so much nicer. In a way it feels softer, smoother, but it's faster. So, and again, going back to that point, the more you trust it, the more you'll use it. We're gonna talk about the deceleration fuel cut. So for those who aren't aware, what happens on pretty much all uh, standard bikes is when you shut the throttle, so when the bike's decelerating, it actually cuts quite a bit of fuel to the, to the engine via the injectors um, and the ECU map. So the reason that that happens is to reduce emissions 
and also for fuel economy. So the bike simply won't use as much fuel because you're not, uh, it's not having to fuel the motor on the deceleration. What that does mean though, is when you come back to the throttle, it can sometimes be a little bit abrupt and a little bit jerky because the engine's running lean. And it also increases the amount of engine brake because when you're shutting the throttle, the, the motor's not being fueled properly, so it wants to slow down more and it will slow the bike down more via engine braking. So even though it's got a slipper clutch, it's still gonna have more engine brake when, the, when you've got the deceleration fuel cut in, in standard trim. So with this particular one, we've switched that off, but what you do need to know about switching off the deceleration or disabling the fuel deceleration cut is that it will definitely use more fuel. So if fuel economy is a concern for you, you want to use less fuel and you want more kilometers between each uh, fill up, then you have to bear that in mind. And the other thing too is that the secondary air or the, the system, um, the pair system, which takes fresh air from the air box, what it does, it takes fresh air from the air box and puts it into the exhaust system. That fresh air will, if you know, in standard trim, it doesn't make it pop and carry on too much because you've got a standard exhaust and a cat and all that sort of stuff. But they do that to clean up the emissions so that it produces, uh, so when, they, you know, when they're testing the bikes to compliance test them, they actually got to clean a fuel burn because it's the fresh air from the air box. But if you then go and disable the fuel deceleration cut, what happens is the exhaust is hot when the engine's running. The bike is now on deceleration, adding, keeping the engine fueled. So when it does that in that state, what happens because the throttle's shut and, the, and as the RPMs drop, there's, there's, you know, there's a bit of overfuel because the, the engine's overrunning. So there's a little bit you know, unburnt fuel into your exhaust pipe. And if you don't have a cat and if you've uh, got a system like this, a full, this one's a full Acropovic system. I didn't mention that, but that's a full Acropovic system that fuel's going into the exhaust a little bit, and you've still got the um, secondary air or pair system, it, you haven't blocked it, and it's adding fresh air, it ignites the fuel. Hot exhaust, fuel, and air means fire, bang, and that's why you get the deceleration popping, you know, when the bikes are popping on decel a lot, um, and then also when you shut the throttle, when the, the, you know, the exhaust blows flames. Now, it looks cool when the exhaust is blowing awesome big flames uh, and it's kind of fun, you know, for the first five or 10 minutes about the decelerating, de deceleration popping. But over time, it will annoy you, or maybe it won't, depending on your, on your disposition, but it's excessive on R1s. If you disable the fuel cut or let the bike run properly on deceleration, um, it's adding that extra fuel. And if you don't block the secondary air, it's gonna pop and carry on on decel excessively. Um, it won't just do it a little bit, it'll do it excessively. This bike, we have blocked the secondary air system, we have done the full custom tune, and we have disabled the uh, fuel cut so that the throttle response is absolutely perfect. It's always an option. The customer is concerned, it, it desires to get the best possible tune for the bike over and happy to sacrifice a little bit of fuel economy. But you'll hear when we listen to this thing running on the dyno, it still pops on decel and there's a few, you know, it'll do a few little flames and stuff like that, and it's at a really nice level. If you do not block the secondary air and you disable the fuel cut, um, it will pop and carry on extensively. If that's what you're after, that's great, but just be aware of that. So that's what we've done in this particular case. And yeah, as I said, it's uh, made uh, a lot more power. The other thing we've done on this bike as well, we've done our DB, uh, DB03 suspension upgrade, um, so that's, changing the geometry of the bike, um, respringing the bike front and rear, that makes a massive improvement. It makes the bike easier to ride. Like what I was talking about with the throttle, it just, the bike feels connected to the road. You have a lot more feedback and confidence from the chassis and the tires. So you can actually corner with more confidence. You can carry trail brake and the bike's predictable and it's just a lot better and easier to ride. I'll go as far to say with this, even though let's, let's you know, bear in mind the power gain we made with the exhaust, the full exhaust system on the bike. Around the racetrack and to produce a lap time, if you were to put the NJ84 throttle maps into the bike or the ECU or one of our maps into the ECU and do the suspension upgrade, you are gonna do a faster lap time around a racetrack even with still the standard exhaust and no fuel tune. So even if we just left the fuel tune standard, 
standard exhaust, even though significantly less power, because the bike handles so well and because the throttle maps are so good, you'll trust it, you'll carry entry speed, you'll have good mid-corner mid speed, and you'll pick up the throttle um, and accelerate off the turn so much faster. So your lap time with just those things would be much, much faster than just if you were to say, put a, a, a full system on it and tune it for that full system, but not address the throttle maps um, and not address the suspension setup, you won't be able to ride the bike as fast as you would with those things. The order of priority in terms of like this, this is awesome, this bike. Um, it's even got a TransLogic uh, quick shifter and blipper, which is working fantastically well. This bike's got it all, so it's great. It's had the suspension done, it's had the NJ84 throttle maps put in, and we've also given it a custom tune. It's got the full exhaust, so it's got everything. Priority order, I would say with these R1s, the first thing is the throttle maps. They need to be addressed. They're not, they're not a good thing out of the box. Definitely need to be addressed. If you've got one, you won't know yourself once you uh, change those over to our, to our NJ84 throttle maps. Then the suspension's the next one. If, you know, if you're budget conscious and you're trying to plan out your build or, or go with it in a certain way, the throttle maps first, suspension second, then a full system in tune. That's what's gonna get you the performance in that order. So um, came up great, sounds amazing, and uh, probably time to go and have a listen to it.